Uh, welcome. We're recording a live video uh, webinar uh, around thriving when the paycheck is gone. We're excited to have guest speakers, uh, Bill Barr and Nick Bailey. We'll tell you more about them here in just a few. So, all right, guys, let's get into it. So my name is Ryan Ray, president and CEO of Jobs for Life. Uh, we are a uh, national organization, uh, private uh, charity here located again in Raleigh, North Carolina. Jobs for Life was formed uh, back in 94 out of the need to help individuals uh, to get work. Uh, but what we quickly found was that it was simple to help people get jobs. The challenge was people keeping those jobs long term. So we evolved into a job skilled character based uh, training company where we teach people God's design for work helping people understand uh, that we have a unique set of gifts and talents uh, to be used to then bring in income to take care of our family. And so today uh, we're gonna be sharing uh, in this current climate that we're in, you all know that we are experiencing uh, a season here of the coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, which has just absolutely changed the landscape, the way we typically do business, uh, not just in the United States, but all across the world. And so one of our stakeholders, our uh, uh, one of the individuals who loves Jobs for Life, Bill Barr, came to me and said, Ryan, I have some information that I think the people really, really need to hear. And so what we're going to talk about today is thriving when the paycheck is gone. Uh, and so I want to take a second and introduce uh, our panelists who are going to be uh, sharing in this conversation with us. And I'll start with the young man I just mentioned. His name is Bill Barr. Uh, and Bill is recently retired from a career in sales performance consulting. Uh, Bill has traveled the world delivering sales, sales management, and marketing training to large and mid-sized organizations. Uh, he has also been a small business consultant, uh, which he continues to do from home. And Bill, uh, you're doing that today, I see. Uh, right there, there I am. Up That's home. right. Uh, and so um, he has a, a beautiful wife, Karen. He attends Bayleaf Baptist Church in Raleigh, North Carolina, has two children, five grandchildren, and has been an instructor and a supporter of Jobs for Life for, man, four years. Bill, man, welcome. Yep. I'm welcome. I'm, I'm glad to be here and uh, looking forward to spending some time with you, Ryan. We're glad to have you, Bill. And then we also have Nick. So we have two perspectives of this conversation. And Bill, he, he told me right up front, he said, man, listen, you, you've got one of the more seasoned individuals on one side of this conversation. And then we've got one of our younger generation on the other. And I might be somewhere in the middle. I don't know. Uh, but on the other side uh, is Nick Bailey. Uh, and Nick is currently a senior talent acquisition partner, uh, WCG Clinical. Uh, Nick, I should have asked, what's WCG? Yeah, so WCG, we do clinical trials. So quite literally right now, we are on the front line. We're one of the companies that's doing some of the IRB approvals for some of the vaccines and treatments for COVID-19. Um, we're helping with doctor's offices, hospitals and stuff to get up and running with contracts to do these trials. Um, so yeah, this is a very interesting time in our company's life as well. We are, again, I, I think it's best summed up as on the front lines of, of trying to find a cure and, and treatments for this disease. Um, certainly before this, we were trying to find cures and, and treatments for other diseases as well, and we'll continue to do that for, for many, many years to come. Awesome, Nick. Well, man, we're glad to have you. Uh, you're, you have a bachelor's degree uh, in psychology from UNC. We won't hold that against you today, um, <laughs> as well as the master's in healthcare administration from Pfeiffer University. Um, Nick is also a, a member, active member and deacon. Also, man, welcome at Bayleaf Baptist Church. Uh, and he, uh, he has a wife and two kids also. So again, guys, welcome uh, to this conversation. I'm excited to uh, have you guys and just looking forward to how we can empower uh, and encourage individuals to go out and still experience the dignity of work. Yes. During this season, during this economy, we all know that work is important, uh, but the way we've done it up to this point uh, has changed for a lot of people. Uh, would either one of you like to just, just kind of help set the table and, and talk about the current climate that we're in versus where we were, man, what, just two weeks ago? 
Well, uh, Ryan, we just saw the unemployment numbers spike. Uh, that was on the news this morning. Uh, so a lot of people have become unemployed uh, who were employed before that. And uh, so uh, that's certainly a, a significant uh, piece of information. It's a concern for all of us, of, of course. Uh, but our economy has been so robust and so good that that's um, a, uh, a surprise, but not unexpected uh, because we have been uh, having a lot of industries that are having to shut down or close up or tighten up or shorten up. And so uh, that's, that's not that surprising, but that's a good group of people who uh, may not see a paycheck for a while. And, in, and that's one of the reasons that I thought that we ought to be doing something about that here and, and helping those folks. Absolutely. Nick, any perspective there? Yeah, it's definitely a, an interesting time to see. Um, I think there's a lot of caution that you, you see right now, even companies that are not slowing down. My company is a great example of this. We're, we're keeping busy. We, we've got just as, more, as much work, if not more, uh, now than we had before. But even, even we're being cautious when hiring and, and bringing on new staff. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a, a ever-changing and quickly changing environment. Um, and, and we do see a lot of people that have found that their, their jobs may be affected with the stay-at-home mandates by government and stuff. So, um, yeah, the, the paychecks or the, or the bills um, keep coming, even though the paychecks may not. So this is, I think it's a very timely topic that we're going to talk about today. Well, awesome, man. Well, look, well, let's get right into it. So uh, the gig economy, uh, you know, we've seen our, uh, we've seen America evolve quite a bit uh, mm -hmm. over the past, uh, we'll say 100 years, right? Went from the Industrial Revolution, you know, we moved into now what, you know, I guess maybe 10, 20 years ago was the information age where all the information is right here at our disposal, at our fingertips to now where I feel like we're in the gig economy where because of information and technology, we have so much access. Uh, and so the gig economy, you know, we could define it as the many and growing list of part-time jobs and opportunities uh, that many people do to supplement their income, uh, even providing a full-time income from multiple sources. Uh, gig comes from a combination of the term used to describe an event where, mu where musicians perform one time or short term. Uh, they may have a gig at a local pub, but it's just a new way of finding work through the internet or a gigabyte. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just some quick examples. Uh, Nick, your wife is doing some gigging now, I understand, as a musician, uh, a teacher, um, an artist. Uh, Bill, we just introduced you being a consultant, uh, doing, I'm sure you do contract work. There are nannies yeah. right now that may be looking for some gig work because kids are home. Uh, waiters and waitresses, of course, now may be looking for gig work now that restaurants have closed. Uh, nurses, day laborers, uh, and tutors. Uh, and some of the job titles or categories might be freelance work, part-time work, temporary work, uh, temp to perm, contract work, entrepreneurship, which is going to be huge you know guys in a climate like this you know entering into a recession hopefully we don't go that far as a depression but in these seasons is when an entrepreneurial mindset thrives right like That's how right. many unicorns and great opportunities and companies and services have been created in a season like this mm -hmm. so um you guys want to want to elaborate a little bit on on this idea called the gig economy yeah, and then you you hit one. Uh, my wife right now, she's a a, uh, a teacher. She teaches uh, at the university level with voice and piano lessons, um, but she also does that from her home, teaching voice and piano out of our out of her home. And so um, she's doing that right now. That's why you have the the unusual background that I'm in. She's in the studio doing a, a Zoom and FaceTime herself to to continue teaching her kids. Um, but it's a, it's a great opportunity there. Awesome. And you know, I, Ryan, my last 20 years uh, as a consultant have always have all been gigs, uh, just individual opportunities uh, from one company to the nether, to the next one, uh, doing uh, sales and marketing training, sales management training, and uh, traveling the world doing that. Yeah. Uh, now that I'm retired, I'm not doing as much of that. 
but uh, I still do. Uh, I'm right now on an advisory board for a company based in Ukraine who uh, they need some uh, help with their sales and marketing. And so I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the uh, Zoom uh, with them once a week to, to help them. Wow. And, and that's, that's the kind of thing that uh, people can do small amounts, but it can add up to uh, even a full-time work or at least uh, uh, some extra income. And you know, the reason I think about this is even more important for folks to embrace and not just sit around the house hoping Congress will send them a check or hoping for uh, relief you know, from uh, uh, unemployment insurance and things like that. Yeah, that's important for, uh, for some, but uh, if they can really think about it, uh, maybe it's a time for an opportunity to learn how I could earn some extra money on the side, even after I get my paycheck back. Right, yeah. right. So true, man. You just brought it up. I mean, so, so, so let's get into that. I mean, like you said, there's ways, why should we be trying to find new ways of earning money? You know, uh, my wife shared with me a, a, a Facebook message the other day where somebody in Canada said, oh, wow, you guys are knocking it out the park. Your government's going to give you a one-time check of $1,200. Well, ours just agreed to give us 2000 a month, right? <laughs> but, but, but if I'm sitting around waiting on that 1200 that that may be a, a real short lifeline. I'm making do something with that. Um, but it's an opportunity, as you said, Bill, to take some initiative um, to explore operations. The way business got done two weeks ago is over. Right. Yeah. Mark Cuban, I was reading an article on him. He said, how can you, particularly if you're an entrepreneur like he is, who is your customer going to be? How do you yeah. start reaching who your customer is going to be? Because it's probably different than it is today. Uh, but Nick, um, talk to us. Um, lead with others con contributing. How, how can we um, find those opportunities, those gig opportunities, those part time opportunities to begin to supplement our income? Yeah, I think the, the first thing to look at is some of the places that you very well may be already looking um, for jobs. You know, your, your massive uh, career boards, your, your monsters.com, your Indeed, your zip recruiters, uh, comp they, they recognize that those are great places that have done their own advertising so that the average person knows about them. And so that's maybe a good place to put these part-time jobs on there. Um, other a areas that people may not think of, um, but you may find, um, are places like Glassdoor. Uh, LinkedIn is a great, great place to find jobs. This may be an environment where normally on LinkedIn you find careers, you find uh, full-time jobs, but again, as, as companies shift and try to use the, the resources at hand, that may be a place to, to find that. Uh, and, then, and then other places like Craigslist. Um, next door, I've noticed on next door people putting, um, hey, I need help with this or, or I need assistance with that. Uh, other places we, we tend to forget about, go to the company itself. If you think of a company, you hear something um, that Amazon might be hiring, go to their website directly. Go see for yourself directly on their website what they have, what they have going on. Um, a lot of local media are trying to help out with this as well. So uh, your local news station, local newspaper, they very well may have areas on their websites of, of current job postings. Um, that, that may be a great place to, to look and to come up with stuff. And then another one I, I saw just this past week, trying to pick up a few groceries in person when you're at the grocery store, they were doing interviews there on the spot as you walk through the front door, big sign, now hiring. There are companies, as we said, that this has created a, a increase in their uh, traffic that they're seeing, an increase in, in what they're, they're doing on a day-to-day -day, and they need additional bodies to, to help them out with that. That's a, a great place to, to look as well is when you're out, when you have to be out, um, just keep an open mind of what's available around me. Right. You know, uh, Ryan and Nick, I've seen uh, other signs like our, our Lowe's Home Improvement Store uh, has a yeah. sign out there, they're now hiring. And there are other places that, that are now hiring. And, but our mindset as a, as, a, as a community has mostly been, well, I want a full-time job. I'm, I'm looking for a, the security of a full-time job, the benefits of a full-time job, but that may not be available right now. But that doesn't mean you should sit around. 
Instead, maybe pile up a couple of part-time jobs. Uh, and that's the gig economy uh, to, uh, to tide you over. And right. uh, then when uh, you get that full-time job back, then you can make a decision, do I continue with this part-time job or this new part-time activity? Like your wife, Nick, teaching, uh, take, teaching the kids uh, uh, music lessons, giving them music lessons, or um, somebody tutoring uh, children who are right now studying online. But maybe they're not so good with math and maybe the mom's not so good with math either, uh, but you like math. And so maybe you can help someone with, with some math. And so you might be able to put yourself out as well on the market, not just looking for opportunities, but also creating your own. Yeah, I think that's a, a great point too of once the economy comes back and, and I, I think and hope that a lot of the decline we've seen has been forced because we're, we're all having to stay at home and all from the fear of the unknown. And, and so hopefully, um, especially when you look at stuff like the stock market, uh, hopefully that'll come back very quickly. But if you're, you're doing these gig economies, you're finding that part-time job to help tide you over. Maybe you find a passion for something that you'd never thought of before. Maybe that ends up being your full-time, yes. long-time job. It's just a new career path that, that you'd never done. This might be a time to experiment with some of that. Yes. Yeah. Try it out. Yeah, I think a lot of people yeah, are going to find their purpose, you know, find their passions because we may, a lot of people were working in jobs that they didn't find meaningful. You know, man, I, the Gallup poll said that employee disengagement was, has already reached 80%, like 80% of employees are disengaged at work. Uh, mm -hmm. So man, I hadn't even thought of that until just now, like how will that Im influence that when we get back to to working, how much more engaged will we be? So, um, good point, guys. Um, what 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 about opportunities to learn? Like, where are there opportunities to go out and learn and 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 develop some new skills, get some new information? You know, I think uh, like Udemy, uh, some other platforms. Like, this is really a great season to be learning. Ryan, that's yeah, a, it that's definitely a, is. Yeah, that's a great and more and more institutions, including higher education are offering, uh, cutting their fees to nothing, uh, and, and offering their courses, offering their professors, offering their teachers, uh, offering, uh, reaching out right now. And uh, you can get a, you can go to sign up for a course at Harvard University if you yep. uh, wanna get a, a, a real big uh, badge on one of your courses and, and get started in something, uh, yep. even if it's just the first course in a new uh, content area, something you've always been interested in but just haven't been able to pursue. Uh, because you've needed to have a full-time job uh, in order to support your family, maybe now, now is the time to uh, to uh, uh, personally grow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nick, uh, in the beginning, we kind of flirted with this a little bit. Um, There's some predators out there offering some temp jobs that you might want to be careful about. Yeah, absolutely. And. I know we're starting to see an increase. I know our company uh, uh, is a global company. We're seeing an increase um, in spam and, and emails. Um, it, it's, it's sad to say, but there are people that are going to take this opportunity to, pre to, to be a predator and to, to prey on, on people in that, their time of stress and unknowing. Right. Um, so, you know, I would, I would make sure uh, to, to advise people the old adage of if, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Make sure to apply that right now, especially when you're seeing stuff on, on Craigslist, stuff that may not be on a, a direct company's website. Um, take it with a, with certainly a, a look at, okay, does this make sense? Uh, right. One of the big red flags that, that they always tell us about is anytime you're asked to put up your own money, to join and make money, that should be a huge red flag. Um, if they're asking you to, hey, we want you to, to do this job for us, you can do it from home, but you need to wire us $2,000 to get started, or you need to go buy a Visa gift card and send it to, to this number, those should be huge red flags. And so we want people to be diligent, not to, to be taken advantage of. Um, again, we got a warning of um, charitable causes. There's people setting up charities, websites, um, saying, hey, we're, we're trying to help. 
uh, help people in need and donate a little money here, that they're complete and total scam. So make sure that the see how long has this, this company been around? What's their background? What do we really know about them? Um, and, and certainly go to, to places that you, you, you respect, you know, um, if you want to donate, if you want to, to uh, make that connection, go to the, the big ones that you hear about. Um, go to Jobs for Life. Go to your local church that you're involved with. They're ones that, that can certainly help out in those areas, too. Good stuff, man. Yeah, that is great, great, great advice. Bill, any thoughts there? I, I, no, I reiterate what, what uh, Nick is saying, that uh, you, you – always anytime you're going to make a contribution you want to check the charity out but it's also you may be asked to make a quote contribution for somebody who wants to guarantee you a job or help you start a new business uh, but they want money up front uh, check it out make sure that's a a bona fide uh, franchise organization or some other organization that makes sense and and uh, go to their website and, uh, and and talk with others about, does this make any sense for me? Uh, get some folks around you, family, uh, others, just get on the phone and, and say, hey, uh, has anybody tried to do this work, whatever they're saying, that they'll help you get started with? And, awesome. uh, and make sure that it's a, it's a valid start. And, uh, and you gotta be careful with your money right now and not, not, right. Be, uh, not be wasting any. Uh, this is the time to be frugal and, and wise and, and careful, uh, maybe the best, best word to use here. Yeah, that just brings up a point, you know, Bill, being very familiar with Jobs for Life. And I know, you know, the information being one arm of what we do, the other arm being mentorship. Yeah. Um, this wasn't a part of our, our script, guys, but maybe just speak for a second. How important is mentorship? You know, how important is the counsel of others during the season like this? Well, you know, uh, Ryan, as you know, we, we assign a mentor or a counselor to every single participant in our traditional eight-week class, Yep. Uh, Jobs for Life class. And there's a reason for that. That's actually the most powerful part. I'm an instructor for the class, but I'm not nearly as important as the uh, uh, counselors that are assigned. We call them champions because they are championing the, the cause of their, of their student or their participant. Uh, and, and that's really where the power goes and, and, is, and is. And so uh, uh, talking to others uh, older than you, or more experienced than you, talking to your peers even, that, that you consider uh, to be uh, logical, wise kind of people uh, is really important. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, and, and if you have a mentor already, that can be a great person that can look into at you and help you decide what would be a, a great gig for you? What would be something that you'd be good at? Um, you know, that, that's one of the things to consider right now. When you're looking for those gig events, um, what areas are your passions? What areas are you good at? Um, were you good at something like sewing? Were you good at, you know, there, there might be something that you can do on the side right now, repairing people's clothes. What about landscaping? You enjoy working in your garden, in your yard. Um, there's certainly people that aren't able to do that right now. So helping them out would be, would be wonderful um, to do that. And, and those mentors may be able to be insightful and see something about you that you didn't even realize, oh, yeah, I am really good at that. Maybe I should look for opportunities around that area. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Absolutely. Well, Bill, how should someone go about? Now, we've talked about, like, why you should go find new ways of earning money. We've talked mm -hmm. about, Nick, you told us where we can go find those opportunities. We talked about, you know, acquiring some knowledge and skills and being careful, seeking mm -hmm. mentorship while we're in this journey. Now, Bill, let's get to the nitty gritty. How can we go about creating a new income flow? Yeah, that's a great question, and 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 here's where I get to talk marketing and sales a little bit. Uh, right. But one of the things is you got to decide what it is you want to offer somebody else to that that'll pay you for it. And so, uh, as as you've talked about, think about what it is you're good at, what other people tell you you're they think you're good at, and and figure out a way to uh, how could some people 
pay me to do that. Uh, when I was uh, uh, singing a lot uh, as a younger man, I was in a quartet and we did gigs and we, we got paid for doing that. You know, it was yes. part time, it was on the side, uh, but it uh, was something because people told me I could sing and, and uh, didn't do dancing as much, but I did, I did do some singing <laughs> and, had, and had a good time with it as well and met new people and uh, that certainly uh, uh, helped me. Uh, so once you decide what it is you want to take to the marketplace as a new service that you're going to do, uh, and most of the time it is going to be a service, although it could be a tangible item that you can make and, and sell to the marketplace, you need to develop your 60-second commercial. Mm. And that 60-second commercial is how you tell about what you're offering and how it's going to help somebody. And so... It's, it needs to be very specific. Let me give you an example. I like to paint, you might say. Well, you're a good painter. Well, and you like to do that. Well, that's a nice thing. But what do you paint? Do you like to paint homes? Do you like to paint the outside of the house? Do you like to paint the inside of the house? Do you like to paint art? Do you, what, where do you like to paint? Do you like, are you good with picking colors and things like that? Uh, be very specific. So uh, you give a new look to house uh, by painting the inside, or maybe you're better at painting the outside. Uh, that's just one example. Whatever it is you like to do uh, and, and want to start doing, get real specific about what it is you, you really want to do. Building your 60-second 60, 60 commercial then is, uh, my best example is to just watch TV and look at the commercials that you see uh, very specifically. Now, there's really two different kinds. The main kind of commercial that you see a lot of for car dealers is to talk about their cars. That's talking about the product or service that they offer that they're trying to sell us. And they talk about the price and the price discounts, and they talk about all the features. But there's another kind of ad that you see a lot of on TV today, and those are the drug company ads. Look at that, those ads from a uh, more of a, uh, an analyst perspective, not the content, but the way they create them. What do they yeah. do first? They show the, bad, the patients that are having trouble, and they have sad faces, and they're struggling, and, and they're, not, they're not happy, and it's, it's sad situations. The next thing that happens is they introduce their drugs that are going to cure that or, or help that. And you see happy faces and you see people playing with others and you see people playing with a dog and they're, and they're act active now. Now they're no longer sad. And then the third thing that happens in a drug ad is all their um, uh, explanations at the end about oh, this drug may cause you blindness, it may cause you whatever all the details about the drug. Now, take those same three groups of, of content, if you will, or thoughts. What you want to do in a 60 second ad is talk about some of a, a problem that some consumers might have or some businesses might have. Maybe they have a problem with um, the paint fading on the outside of their house and you want to paint houses. And so you say, you know, I was driving around the neighborhood and noticed that there were some houses that needed paint, that they were starting, the paint was starting to fade. And I checked into it and it seemed like uh, most of those houses were five or six years old and they uh, were starting to fade out. And, and because of that, I thought well, maybe one of the ways I can help is to, uh, to contact them and, and help them uh, refresh the outside of their house. You know, there's the happy place. And you say, and then the neighborhood looks better and the, and the value of the homes goes up. And so you see that and say, and so, and so call me because I have a way I can bring my truck out here and I have the ladders and I have everything that I need to be able to help you. And all you've got to do is pick out the paint and I'll paint it for you. And our prices are very reasonable. Well, I just did a, a 60 second or shorter promotion of being a painter, a house painter. Well, you can do that, you can play that same thing, and that's your 60 second commercial. Once you build that, you can do it online, you can do it in an email, 
You can do it on a flyer that you go around the neighborhood. There's lots of ways then to let people know it because you have to tell everybody what it is you want to do. And so once you're, once you're, and so you become a little bit of an entrepreneur here yep. and, and you start uh, uh, generating your own small business uh, on the side as a result of identifying first what it is you'd like to do. And secondly, then communicating that in a way that people can, can recognize, oh, my house is five years old. My house needs to be repainted. I better talk to this person. So that's how you create uh, your, uh, your marketing, if you will. It's a 60 second ad of three, three different uh, aspects to it. That's awesome, Bill. Man, thank you, man. I know our uh, viewers and listeners are going to gain a lot out of that because you're right. It's how you show up. Uh, there's so many ways to show up, so many places we can show up. So having a strategy around that is going to be key right now in this season. And you know, Ryan, it does not have to be an expensive advertisement in a newspaper or in, on, a, on a, a cable channel or things like that. There, the internet is so uh, easy a place to to uh, get the word out uh, with all your Facebook friends, with all your network. Mm -hmm. And that network is probably the other concept that I wanna make sure we, we uh, surface here today. And that is your network is all, everybody you know, everybody on Facebook and Instagram, everybody on Snapchat, everybody uh, in your family, whether, you, whether they're on your, your electronic uh, network or not. Uh, and, uh, uh, Nick mentioned uh, LinkedIn. Uh, that's great for business to business. If you come up with an idea that can help businesses uh, prosper, your point is to try to find a way to help someone have a better situation, improve their situation. You're trying to help people through your sales and marketing uh, of your services. And, and network, you don't have to have people in your network who can buy your services, you have to have people in your network who are willing to say, you know, I don't need your paint job, but I know somebody whose house is five years old or six years old. Let me tell you how to get a hold of them. And so you use your network as referrals for opportunities to have sales. Yeah, something that you were just talking about, Bill, that, that I want to make sure to put out there is right now is a, is a little bit different. We do want to make sure to keep ourselves stay, safe with uh, the risk that we have with this disease. Yeah. Um, but yeah, think about what is out there. What can I do while still doing that social distancing? What services may people need? Um, especially when you consider there's, there's certain parts of our, our society right now that are, are probably taking the social distancing um, I don't want to say more seriously, but they're just taking it to another level because they know they're at a much higher risk than um, others may be. So thinking about what might they need, is it something as simple as taking their trash out? Is it something like the land, their landscaping, helping clean up around their, their house? Um, we, we know that some businesses are, are still going, and, but there's a lot of daycares and, and a lot of schools that are, are shut down. Can you offer a service to, to help somebody out with childcare or, or um, maybe you're, you're just really creative. Maybe you can come up with uh, activities or, or ways to, to teach kids. Um, so all of those are, are definitely things to, to think about when you're thinking about your networks. What might your network need right now in this time that you can, can utilize to, to help them, to support them, but also make a little money on the side? Yeah. And the thing is, even if you can't make money, maybe you come up with, you know, I love to read and I could read children's books and I could read them to children uh, online. Let everybody uh, sign up for it and, uh, and I'll sit down at four o'clock in the afternoon and read a children's book to, to the, my audience. Well, maybe you don't make any money on that, uh, but maybe you right. help somebody. And, and helping at this time is something that we all need to continue to do and, and do even more. Uh, yes. Learn how to help our brothers and sisters and, and friends and neighbors and uh, in this time of crisis, uh, which will, will end, but right now is, uh, uh, it is critical. And then, you know, uh, Nick, I like to call it physical distancing rather than social distancing because I really do want us, and we should be all, 
connecting with it. So this just gives folks another excuse to contact their network and, and by email or by um, a phone call or by um, uh, Facebook or one of the uh, social media uh, elements. Reach out to folks and let them know who you are, what, are you, what you're doing and what your interests are and uh, find out uh, how, how you can help. Good stuff, guys. Wow, this has been powerful, man. The time flew by. We want to respect folks because I know they're getting a lot of content thrown at them. Um, and so, look, I just want to encourage, and then I'll come back and just get some closing thoughts from you guys. But I want to encourage you, if you're listening or watching this um, webinar, to, uh, to just go do it. Go start. You know, one of the things that I'm learning now, you know, as leading Jobs for Life is how to be nimble and agile in this climate. Uh, and you're probably going to make some mistakes, but it's not, they're only mistakes uh, if you don't learn from them, right? They are learning opportunities. Just go out there and, you know, and make a mess, you know, and I promise you, you're going to at least learn from it, but learn, you're going to learn by doing. And so yeah. I want to encourage you just to go out there, get started, ask some questions, find somebody who's doing what you would like to do, find that mentor and just go out there and make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill, Nick, any closing thoughts? Well, I'll start with uh, I'll start with uh, just a, my my closing thought is um, if you're one of those people who finds yourself going, I'm just not that creative. I'm not somebody who who is good at at reaching out to people and and promoting myself. Um, well, let's. I wanted to encourage you that again, as we highlighted before, there are companies that are absolutely still hiring. Um, take a look at at. Uh, company, big companies like Amazon and Walmart, these distribution centers, they're, they're begging for employees to come in and help, us, help them out during these times. So take a look at those, those opportunities, um, what might be available there. Um, other areas to, to consider uh, are local governments and municipalities. Those are, are still operating. They may be hiring both part-time and full-time. So those are, are areas to look um, at. Something I was thinking about in preparing for this, uh, as we're seeing more and more cities go into this this shelter um, way of thinking and encouraging people to stay home, there's typically a list of businesses that are still available to be open. Take a look at that list and think to yourself what companies might fall under those categories that because they're one of the few open, they might have uh, a need for, for more employees to help them out. Um, restaurants, um, again, your, your, your local government is, is still operating. Um, delivery services, that's going to be a big one. It's just about every um, national deli uh, restaurant chain has some sort of delivery service now. Um, so consider that stuff. Uh, since I did bring it up with the deliveries and driving, one thing I do want to let people know and, and make sure you consider if that's something that you think, hey, I can, I have a car, I can drive around, consider all the costs with that as well, um, because that is your car. Um, so you're having to pay to maintain that and, and um, think about other implications there, whether it's um, would my insurance cover it if I'm deliv doing delivery right. of groceries for somebody um, or just the, the extra wear and tear as far as, you know, your oil change, your gas, your, your, your tire. So I always encourage people with that line particularly, it can be a great way, especially right now to make some extra income, but what are the, the bigger ramifications and just know, make sure you, you've done some research and know that as well. So there's opportunities for those who are, are not the entrepreneurial type that is in their minds, but, uh, yeah, just keep a lookout. Awesome, not, man. Thank you so we, much. You, you know, we're not really looking for new full-time jobs here. So even if it's not as much pay, uh, it, it is something. And with uh, the likelihood that we're going to get uh, some government assistance, uh, as, such as rent abatement and uh, utilities abatement, as well as perhaps a check in the mail or uh, and some extension of uh, unemployment benefits and things like that that are in the uh, current legislative uh, process right now. Uh, so it's a matter of uh, making enough so you can still buy the groceries or still maintain some flow of income, some work that either gets you out of the house or gets you on the computer uh, in the house, uh, but doing something positive. You can be a victim or you can be a victor. And, and that's what we're really talking about here is, is being victorious over this trying time yes. and 
and coming out of it on the other end even better. That is awesome, Bill. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you so much for bringing such great content, ideas, information around this idea of thriving when the paycheck is gone, taking advantage of this gig economy, freelance, part-time, temporary contract work. Uh, guys, go out, find a new income. The opportunities are all around us. Find a way to take advantage of those. Find somebody who has some results in an area of their life. Learn from them uh, and go create this new income stream. Learn a lot in the process. We thank you for joining us uh, for this webinar. Again, thank you to our guests, Bill Barr and uh, Nick Bailey. We do appreciate your time. For more information, go to jobsforlife.org. Again, that's www.jobsforlife.org. And we'll be sharing and distributing this content across our platform. Remember, God has designed us to work alongside him. He is in control and will be with us in tough times. May God bless each and every one of you and our nation.